Until the lions have their own historians, the tales of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Today, many black people are not fully aware of their rich history, which the gatekeepers of Western scholarship have intentionally obscured. We aim to unearth the brilliance of African mathematicians, a brilliance that predates Greek academicians. We will present compelling evidence showcasing our ancestors' ingenuity, inspiring us to take pride in our heritage. Long ago, Egyptians were at the forefront of mathematical and architectural advancements. They figured out things like the value of pi, which is very close to what we use today. Using their geometry, they also invented things like squaring the circle, columns, obelisks, pyramids, the golden ratio, and scales. Their contributions continue to inspire and amaze us. Famous Greek thinkers like Thales, Pythagoras, and Democritus learned math from Egyptian priests by the Nile River. Plato and Aristotle, two well-known thinkers, said that math started in Egypt. Ancient Egyptians had precise measuring units like the royal cubit, about 52 centimeters, and smaller units like palms, hand lengths, and fingers. They even used ropes with knots to measure long distances accurately. According to Herodotus, geometry began in Egypt. Their fertile land, also known as Pharaoh's fields, were divided equally among all Egyptians. Egyptians used a stretched cord approximately 52 centimeters long, about a cubit, to measure these fields. To mark a straight line on the ground, they used stakes placed along a unique sight line from point A to point B, ensuring a straight path. The pharaoh performed rituals like the stretching of the cord to establish the corners of temples, aligning them with the stars. To measure a straight segment, the part of a line between two points, they counted the number of equal units it contained. This count gave them the length of the segment. Since ancient times, shaping stone has required clear ideas and precise measurements. Architects prioritize ideas, especially geometric ones, using tools like measuring cords and graduated rulers. In ancient Kemet, these tools were essential for measuring lengths accurately based on the fundamental mathematical property that a straight line is the shortest distance between two points. Ancient Egyptians used geometry not just for straight lines, but also for other shapes like triangles, rectangles, and circles. These practical applications of geometry in everyday life are truly impressive and should inspire us to appreciate the ingenuity of our ancestors. For example, the circumference, a closed curved line within a plane, fascinated Egyptian astronomers and mathematicians. They meticulously drew circles using tools like fixed stakes with cords or compasses. The Egyptians' understanding of circles allowed them to calculate the area of a circle accurately using diameters. This geometric knowledge was crucial for their astronomy, as seen in Senenmut's tomb, where circles were divided into 24 parts, representing lunar months. Thales, the founder of Greek geometry around 600 BCE, stated, Every diameter divides a circle into two. Maurice Cantor, known for his research in the history of mathematics, suggested Thales learned this idea in Egypt, where circles were divided into equal parts on monuments like Senenmut's astronomical tomb a thousand years before Thales was born. What were some other practical applications of geometric principles? Wheels have been used in Egypt since the Old Kingdom, invented around 2780 BCE. Although the wheel was also found in Sumer, the Indus Valley, Assyria, Persia, and among Indo-European peoples, Africans knew about the wheel before foreign conquests. These insights link geometry and astronomy closely, showcasing ancient Egyptian mastery of precise measurement and geometric principles in their architectural and astronomical endeavors. What about an understanding of angles? An angle is formed where two straight lines start from the same point. The lines are the sides of the angle, and the shared point is its vertex. In ancient Egypt, Angles were crucial for temple construction, which was marked during the stretching of the cord ritual. The Egyptian word for angle is kises. For example, the Ramesseum, Ramses II's Temple of Millions of Years, is a rectangle with precise right angles. The word kenebet also means a right angle in Egyptian. The great court of Ramses III's Grand Temple at Medinet Habu is almost a square, another example of the application of right angles in Egyptian architecture. 
Ancient Egyptians used tools like the mason square for perpendicular lines. Senegem, a craftsman in Thebes, had a precise wooden square now in the Cairo Museum. Senegem square, a precise tool helped determine if a surface was level. This is essentially an ancient spirit level tool. Similar to what we use today for masonry, Senegem square was made with careful markings and symmetry, essential for accurate measurements. It came from Senegem's tomb in Deir el Medina in Thebes, dating back to Ramses II's reign. Ancient Egyptians focused on right triangles, especially in their pyramid constructions. They preferred using angles that could be easily measured with simple tools like wooden squares. This made it easier to control the slopes of the pyramid sides during construction. So did ancient Egyptian mathematicians specifically know how to calculate the areas of different shapes like triangles, trapezoids, and circles. Well, we have evidence from the Rhind Papyrus. In problem number 51 of the Rind Papyrus, an unknown Egyptian scribe explains how to find the area of a triangle using its base and height. For example, if a triangle has a base of four units and a height of 10 units, its area would be half of the base times its height, which equals 20 square units. In problem number 52 of the Rhind Papyrus, a scribe also calculates the area of trapezoids. For a trapezoid with a larger base of 6 units, a smaller base of 4 units, and a height of 20 units, the area is calculated using the formula half of the sum of bases times height. In this case, it would be 5 times 20, which equals 100 square units. How about circles and the concept of pi? Problem number 50 of the Rand Papyrus explains how Egyptians found the area of a circle. They approximated pi to be about 3.1605. To find the area of a circle with a diameter of 9 units, they subtracted 1 ninth from the diameter, squared the result, and multiplied by pi. For a diameter of 9 units, this gave them an area of approximately 64 square units. Long before Archimedes wrote about it, the Egyptians had already figured out the geometric principles of the scale, which they linked to the idea of balance and fairness, something very important in their culture. Scenes from ancient tombs, like the tomb of Nebemon and Ipuki, show how gold was weighed. Operators were very focused, adjusting the scale carefully to get a precise weight. The Egyptians had different types of scales, for different purposes, all sharing important features that made them work properly. The Egyptians even thought of the scale as a symbol of truth and justice, a concept that would later be adopted by the Greeks and later European cultures. Nature has a basic structure that follows geometric shapes and concepts. Plato, in his book Timaeus, explains that after chaos, the universe came together by arranging different shapes for its elements. Earth is like a cube. Fire looks like a pyramid or tetrahedron. Air is similar to an octahedron. And water is shaped like an icosahedron. The ancient Egyptians, who were excellent observers of nature and students of astronomy, were inspired by these observations to not only write, that is Medunetja, but also develop key mathematical concepts. Share this video with your family and friends. Be proudly African.